everyone. Wow, it feels so exhilarating to be here in front of all of you, seeing your smiling faces. So I'm going to talk about mindfulness in communication. And let's start by just taking a collective breath together. We've been talking so much about the breath. So let's just bring awareness to this moment. Thank you. So mindfulness is about bringing awareness. And mindfulness in communication is about bringing awareness to the fact that in the present moment, when we are using language to communicate with others, when we're interacting with others, that we have a choice as to how we're interacting with others and what kind of language we're using. When we're not aware of the use of our language and how we are interacting with one another, what usually happens is that we tend to interact with one another from a perspective of habits. Habitual patterns that have been formed throughout very many years in our lives as we were growing up. And let me tell you what I mean about this. So you know, when we were babies, we came to the world with the ability to communicate, to speak a language, right? How many of you were born speaking? Raise your hand. <laughs> you were born speaking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you were born perhaps communicating, looking at others, making noises, making sounds, exploring the world. However, the language that we speak is the language that we have learned. So for example, when we are kids, we are taught what to say when someone gives us a gift. When we are kids, we are taught what to say when we feel uncomfortable, when we don't know what's going on, when we make a mistake, when we did something that impacted negatively another person, we were taught how to express when we, don't, when we like something and when we didn't like something. And a lot of that teaching came through repetition. A lot of it came through modeling. Let me give you an example. You probably noticed my accent. I'm originally from Argentina. And growing up in Argentina, my, my parents, when they would have a disagreement, when they were upset with one another, when perhaps my mother felt, felt diminished by my father, when perhaps my father felt threatened by my mother, do you know how they communicated? They gave each other the silent treatment. They took distance. They didn't make eye contact. They didn't communicate. Growing, how many of us have had experiences with parents who gave each other the silent treatment? Thank you, yeah. So growing up in a household, whenever there was discomfort, there was this separation, this lack of connection, and this silence was painful. And especially because I had to be the go-between in between my parents, and sometimes the silent treatment lasted hours. Sometimes it lasted days. One time, when I was about nine, it lasted a whole summer. So after embarking on this journey on studying language and communication and bringing mindfulness to the way we communicate, I got married. I got, I got married to a man that I loved and I adored and I still love and I adore, and it's been 13 years. Now, when we got married and I was upset because I felt triggered by something that he said or did, I was uncomfortable. I might have been, you know, angry at him or frustrated. Guess what I did? Anybody can guess? Silent, Silent treatment. But you can say, but you've been studying communication and languages and mindfulness and meditation and yoga and all these things for all these years. You are giving the silent treatment to your husband? Oh, yes, because that was what I had learned as a child. That's the model of communication I had learned to relate when I felt sad, when I felt uncomfortable, when I felt triggered, when I felt distrusting. So um, 
when we are learning language and communication as children, we learn it, one, from modeling from our parents, but we also learn it because we keep hearing these phrases, labels, and ideas and beliefs about us that get repeated over and over to us. And in time, we start assimilating that and bringing it into our beings and then believing that, that those phrases are who we are. And then we identify with those phrases, with that language, with those belief systems. Let me tell you a story of a client of mine who came to me. She was, the, uh, she was a new director, uh, executive director of an organization. And she came to me because she said, Alejandra, I can't find my voice. When I'm speaking with someone one-on-one, -on -one, oh yes, no problem. There's, there's some synergy, our communication flows. But when I'm in a meeting, I lose my voice. I lose my leadership. I end up agreeing to things that I vehemently disagree. I say yes when I want to say no. I don't know how to set boundaries. And I literally like try to say something and I start feeling a knot on my throat. Has anybody here have had that experience? So as we started exploring what was happening for her, what we realized was that it all came from a repeated message she heard during her childhood. Children are seen, but not heard. And in order to belong to this family, to be loved by this family, to feel safe in this family, you need to be quiet. So this has affected her 30 years later when she was the director of a nonprofit organization and she couldn't bring up her voice. She had lost her voice and she had lost her authenticity. So I want to leave you with something. How do we bring mindfulness to our communication? So first of all, I want to invite you, just like many of us did here, to have real clarity about the kind of vision of the, for yourself. What kind of vision do you have for yourself? What kind of life experiences do you really long to have? Become very intimate with your longings. And then finally, become devoted to your values. You were talking about values. Become a real devotee of what truly matters to you. And when you know what your vision is, when you know what your longings are, the longings of your heart, when you know what matters to you, have your communication, have those visions, values, and longings be the roots that from which stem your communication. So that as you are relating to others, you are not generating more patterns, repetitive patterns, and regenerating dynamics. So that when you are communicating with others, you, your communication is no longer scripted. When you feel sad, excited, annoyed, uncomfortable, uncertain, afraid, empowered. So that your communication is no longer scripted so that it can be fresh, it can be spontaneous. And I do believe that we all have the capacity to communicate mindfully. I also believe that when we bring our awareness and choice to the way we speak our language, we use language to communicate and the way we relate to one another, that that is the next step in our human evolution. Because if we are truly learning how we are using language, one of the most powerful and influential tools that we have at any given moment, readily accessible to us for free, if we are mindful about how we are using language when we're engaging with one another, and how we are having our voices be heard with power and compassion, I do believe that we can fulfill our human potential, which is to have a thriving ex life experience, not only for ourselves, but for all beings and our Mother Earth. Thank you. Mm -hmm.